Let's go to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and pick up the Space Shuttle launch. We're very close. Bruce Hall? This is a CBS News special report. From Kennedy Space Center, here is CBS News correspondent Bruce Hall. Cumulate. T minus 45 seconds. We're just 18 seconds away from switching command of the countdown from the ground computers to the onboard computers. T-minus 31 seconds, and we're switching control of the countdown to the onboard computers. T-minus 25 seconds, sequencer is now controlling the final seconds. T-minus 20 seconds, Mark. Very close to the launch of the space shuttle at Kennedy Space 15, Center. This is a second 14, launch to try and begin the first 12, space 11, salvage mission. 10. Let's we pick it up on the final 10 start. seconds. Seven, six, we have main engine start. Three, two, one, and liftoff, liftoff of Discovery, and the first flight to retrieve and return satellites from space, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. It seems almost routine these days. Watch her as she comes through the, uh, just the scattered cloud layer over Kennedy Space Center. Beginning Bruce, let's pick you up there. To, uh, 89% into 67%. To Bill, as you can see, the Space Shuttle pressure. Discovery has just broken through the clouds after the second Close launch from the Kennedy confirmed. Space Center here in Florida. It appears that it was a perfect launch. It was also a very smooth countdown after yesterday's postponement due to two weather down problems. Down Today, the weather miles, cleared in Florida. No problems percent. with the turbulent winds, which caused yesterday's postponement. Passing through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. With me is astronaut John Blaha. John, as the astronauts are now in space, moving upward, we're now through the area where we had the problems that caused yesterday's postponement, aren't we? Engines at 104 percent. And the weather along the route looks good? It sure does, Bruce, and the crew right now is eagerly uh, Looking forward to the solid rocket booster separation, which will occur in about 30 seconds. That is an important stage in the uh, firing of the uh, space shuttle, isn't it? It sure is, Bruce. Uh, after that point, uh, we get good uh, guidance to a, a Miko in about... There you have a beautiful shot still off the uh, coast of uh, Florida as the space shuttle Discovery begins its eight-day mission. We're now standing by for the solid rocket boosters to be separated. Thrust tailing off in SRB, standing by for separation. There you have the separation of the solid rocket boosters, the first major step in the flight of the Space Shuttle separation Discovery. Confirmed. Nominal first stage performance. The Houston first stage performance nominal. The initial information from Johnson Space Center in Houston, everything is going good. John, it looks like we had a... ...said uh, <laughs> afterwards, he said he thought it was coming apart. Did you uh, think it was coming apart? Uh, no, uh, you know, uh, w we all knew that uh, it wasn't coming apart, but there's just so much, uh, so much action, rattling, and it was a tremendous thrill. But at this point right now, you say it's gotten smooth for them again. It's... Yes, uh, when you get those big solids off, well, all of a sudden it's, uh, like I said, just electric drive, perfectly smooth, and... Uh, as they're looking out, the black sky, or well, the blue sky will be turning to a, a black as they go into space. When Commander Rick Hawk right now, is he so busy that he's not thinking about anything else but looking at his instruments, or is he thinking, my goodness, this is wonderful, we're going up into space? <laughs> well, he's, uh, he's mostly thinking about, about his instruments, but uh, you can't help but uh, notice everything that's going, ar going on around you. It's, uh, just uh, the world's greatest experience. Uh, I know Senator Garn's going to enjoy it a lot. Well, there's a lot of us who'd like to do what Senator Garn's <laughs> going to get to do. 
Brian? Uh, let me jump in right here for just a moment. Uh, we'll come back to, to you and Vance Brand in a moment, but we've got a, a replay of the, uh, of the launch all queued up and ready to go now. The launch of Discovery, it was set for yesterday, got off on time this morning at 7.15. The first flight to retrieve and return satellites from space, and the shuttle has cleared the tower. As Bob Bozell and astronaut Vance Brand had noticed, th noted this one was uh, picture perfect. And Bob, I was I was curious about one and a half minutes into the launch, you you noted that that was the point that they were worried about yesterday. Why? Well, they were worried yesterday because of crosswinds and at, at, a, at a period when the winds are coming from different directions and they go through what they call maximum aerodynamic pressure. That's where the, the greatest danger, right, Vance? That's where the greatest danger is that the thing might fly apart if the winds were wrong. That's right. About 40,000 feet, the, uh, the greatest pressure is against the front of the vehicle. Bob. And uh, any winds tend to twist the vehicle, and it has wings and a tail, so it's, uh, you have to be very careful with it. Bob, perhaps maybe uh, you or Vance could, could tell me, has the one-day delay made a significant difference in the complications of this flight? Absolutely not. It's, uh, you know, we have a five-day window. Uh, everything will just slip one day and uh, no problem whatsoever. How, concer how concerned are NASA officials about the difficulty of retrieval, this being the first time, and is that still set for the fifth and uh, seventh days of, uh, of the flight? Uh, starting with the last, uh, yes, it's uh, still scheduled for the fifth and the seventh days. Uh, as far as concern, it's uh, been well planned. It's uh, everything's got to go right, but uh, there's every uh, belief that it that it, it will go right, Brian, and I should, think it'll be a, a great great coup, really. Brian, we should point out that not only was Vance the commander on the mission when those two satellites were lost, that was the mission when the jet backpacks, which are going to be used to try to recover the satellites, were also used for the first time, and that must have been amazing to watch those guys floating around like Buck Rogers out there. Yeah, we, uh, we as I mentioned uh, once before, I called them Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon, and uh, <laughs> it, it was weird seeing the backpack uh, and man all weighing about 700 pounds on Earth, but nothing up there. Uh, proceeding out 100 yards from the ship. It was a, well, it was a great thing to, to watch. Okay, Vance Brand, Bob Bazell, gentlemen, thank you both. Uh, and so we will be watching in the second and third days of, of this flight. Discovery will launch two satellites and then retrieve two on the fifth and seventh days, set to return home eight days from now. That marks it Friday, the 16th of November. They'll return to the Cape from whence they came.